Heidi, hello everybody, it's Nair and Fire Reborn Dolls today doing another box packing. Remember, if you're seeing this box packing, that means this baby is safely home. This was such a fun baby to make and I really appreciate Ashley for giving me the opportunity to make this baby. Um, I just had so much fun. Um, I love doing the fantasy babies and I've had a lot of custom orders recently. And one of the things I do want to say is that I'm booked for custom orders all the way until December. So, and of course, if I, when I do a December custom, you're not going to get it in time for Christmas. So, if you want a custom doll, you need to ask and start that process and let's have a discussion early. So, um, this baby's mommy wanted some special clothing and she paid a little bit of extra and that was so much fun to go shopping. So, let's start with what she's coming home with. She is a baby based on the character from the movie The Autopsy of Jane Doe. So she has both uh, a layout that would be consistent with that character who was supposed to be born in the 1680s and also her mom wanted more modern pieces as well. So this is the, the vintage part, not even vintage, the antique part of her outfit. Um, so it's a beautiful little bonnet got little pearls along the sides and it's just just gorgeous so because I don't want the the tissue paper to bleed onto the white dress I'm going to put it in a plastic bag and then and then um, and then wrap it up This is the part I really liked about the baby, was finding these um, beautiful old-fashioned pieces. That was, that was really cool. This is a handmade um, christening gown, but what we use as christening gowns now would have been sort of everyday baby wear in 1680s. So if you haven't seen the movie, it's really good. I don't want to spoil it for you. But it's about a father and son who are coroners and they're asked to investigate a body that's found at the scene of a double murder. And it looks as though the body is, so the, the murder scene is pretty grisly, but the husband and wife, uh, excuse me, uh, the husband and wife, that part's very, very um, grisly, but the, body, the other body they find is absolutely pristine. And so as the father and son do the autopsy, they find that all oh, is not what it seems, and they figure out that the body that they're looking at is actually still alive and she's not very happy about having an autopsy done on her and they figure out that she is a was made into a witch probably trying to make sure she didn't become a witch hang on do this the wrong way so in, in trying to make her not to protect her from witchcraft, they actually turned her into a witch. So it's a really, really neat movie. She's a really interesting character, I think. And that's why it was so much fun to create her. All right, so there's one outfit. And then going um, with that outfit, we have a vintage bottle, um, a glass bottle. It was really hard to find a bottle that didn't have like even flow or something like that on it that would make it more contemporary. And then she's gonna have a natural rubber pacifier. Um, and that completes her uh, vintage outfit. And then for her modern outfit, she has a magnetic pacifier 
and this pacifier clip and I thought that would I don't know how well you guys can see that I thought that would be really cool you'll see with her coloring it looks really really neat and it's glow in the dark by the way Ashley if you're watching this which I think you probably are that over here and her mom wanted a Halloween inspired outfit and so I found this sleeper that's got little pink spiders all over it and spider webs and a little bit of pink trim. I thought that was so cool and it looks gorgeous with her coloring which you'll get to see in a moment. So this one I'm not worried about the tissue paper damaging because it's already black. I'm just a bit paranoid now because I had a doll that um, went home recently and the mom said that the black print that's on the inside of the boxes, the priority shipping boxes, got all over the doll's blanket. Luckily the doll was safe inside but the blanket was basically useless. So I'm just so paranoid in the summertime with things. everything getting to their new owners all in one piece so there we go all right next we have a birth certificate she is the real born June kit born August 13th she weighs five pounds, 15 ounces, so almost six pounds. And this was the perfect kit for that. And this is her birth story. So I was really fascinated with the character and I did lots and lots of research on the character. So I wrote this birth story as if I were a midwife of the 1600s. So I did a lot of research on, on midwifery of the 1600s. Um, I learned, for example, that um, if a child was a bastard and the mother refused to name the father, the midwife was not allowed to take care of the mother or the baby because um, if the mother didn't name the father, then the, um, then the town had to basically take care of the mother and the baby and the town didn't want to do that. So if she named the father, then it was the father's financial responsibility. So that I put that into the story. And I just researched a lot of midwifery practices and what they called things and named things. And, and uh, that was just so much fun to write that. So let me just get things ready for the baby. All right. So here she is. Here's Jane Doe. Hope you can see her good. You're way up here on the shelves. But she is the June Awake kit. She's wearing a cute little um, Janny and Jack outfit. I knit her some white booties. She's got pupilless eyes in gray. She has white eyelashes, which I think are, are hard to see, but they're there. Her mom wanted her to have deep lips, and she wanted her, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it. She wanted her to have a half moon birthmark. So her birthmark's right there by her ear. She has painted hair. She wanted dark painted hair and dark lashes. So we're gonna wrap up this little cutie. Oop, her booty's coming off. A nice thick blanket. I like this blanket because it kind of looks like lamb's wool on the inside and that may have been something that Jane Doe born in the 1680s would have had. One of the things I did too, I wanted her to be born on Friday the 13th so 
First of all, she had to be a, a teenager during the Salem Witch Trials, so I had to research what year she would be born. And then I had to look at for all the Friday the 13th in that year, or if there were if there were any Friday the 13th in that year, which actually there were a couple that year. So that was cool. They really wanted her to be born on Friday the 13th. All right, let's move that over here. And then when I pack now, like I said, I'm a little paranoid. I have a, a garbage bag in there to protect from the, the black print on the inside of the box. things are in there too, so they don't get me. Actually, let's put her christening dress, because that's a little bigger on the bottom. She's going home in a little bit bigger box because of all of the, all the stuff she's coming with, so her birth certificate gets put down there. And let's put her bottle, by the way, the bottle has a sealed nipple. So she, her mom can put fake milk in it if she wants to. Just make sure that it's nice and tight in there. Well, let's see. Oh, we just don't. Oh, there goes my puppy. All right, and then we have her two pacifiers. This is her classic rubber one. This is the other one. And we'll just push everything down like that. And we'll see why the puppy is barking. But thank you for tuning in today. Um, and I will let you know I've got another couple of custom dolls that I'm working on. So I'll do some work in progress with that. Thanks for tuning in today, TTFN. Ta-ta for now.